Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to... Wait... Something feels a little bit odd here. Is this even my channel? Now I know what's going on. <laughs> Okay guys, that was a little bit of a silly intro. Hi guys, my name is Sabine. Welcome to another video, but not on my channel. Some of you might be familiar with my face. I make bookish content over at my channel on Sabine's Book Nook, but today, Pan Macmillan and Book Break UK asked me to film a super exciting video for you guys, and today I'll be taking you on a literary tour through Amsterdam. I know. <laughs> so I'll be giving you guys some amazing book recommendations based on the places that they take place in Amsterdam because we of course have a ton of beautiful sightseeing spots. We have some hidden places, some amazing bookstores as well that I will be visiting. And I am so excited today. It is actually such beautiful weather after all of these storms. So I chose the perfect day to take you on this tour. So let's go by train and I will see you guys in Amsterdam. <laughs> you guys might be able to tell the sun is shining so bad i arrived at amsterdam central station the weather is absolutely perfect for today i will be starting off our journey at a very like secretive seclusive space that you rarely see i think in amsterdam it's kind of like hidden i have been there before one time and it was so so beautiful so i'm really excited to take you there with me and afterwards i'm gonna visit one of my favorite bookstores here in amsterdam So I am at the Begeinhof, which is a very tiny secluded space here in Amsterdam that you absolutely have to visit. I just shot a couple of scenery pieces because right now it's way too bright and you cannot actually see the beautiful houses that are behind me. This medieval place was founded in 1346 where there lay a Catholic sisterhood. And this place is where the City of Tears by Kate Moss begins. The City of Tears by Kate Moss actually takes place um, for a great deal here in Amsterdam. And this is actually the sequel to The Burning Chambers, which is the first book in this series. To give you a quick little synopsis or feel about what The Burning Chambers is about, this book explores the beginnings of France's religious wars that were rooted in the Reformation, Henry VIII's dissolution of British monasteries, John Calvin's safe havens for Huguenots in Geneva, and those provided in Amsterdam and Rotterdam. So it goes from Paris to Amsterdam and this is a historical fiction. This is a story of one's family that has to stay together, that has to survive a whole war. This story takes place in 1572 and we follow our main character Minou Jambert and her family are at a royal wedding in Paris. And here an alliance between the Catholic crown and the Huguenot King of Navarre is attended to bring peace because for the past decade a war has been happening in France. However their oldest enemy Vidal is also there in Paris and is looking for a very particular relic and this relic will change the course of history but within the first couple of days of their marriage thousands of people die because of a huge massacre which actually took place a couple of hundred years ago in history as well and Minou's beloved family will have to deal with all of this intense stuff so this book is perfect if you love revenge if you want to get more into historic events and Kate Moss just writes amazing books and this is definitely one that you have to absolutely check out right behind Begeinhof you have this little square with some amazing bookstores that we'll be visiting next and let's start off our journey at the American Book Center. <laughs> <laughs> I am in the Amsterdam Book Center, or no, not the Amsterdam, the American Book Center. And as you can see, this is a stunning bookshop. This has a ground floor 
first floor and a second floor filled with nonfiction, literary fiction, YA, mystery, you name it, and they basically have it. So for one of our recommendations, I'm actually gonna find it here in the bookstore, and then I will share one of my recommendations with you guys. Okay, so I'm sure that most of you guys are actually quite familiar with the story of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This is a, I think they say it's a YA, but I would consider it more of an adult fantasy. In this story, we follow a group of six unlikely characters who have to pair up in order to complete this quite deadly heist, but that has a really high payoff. If you've read the books in the Grishaverse, you are probably quite familiar with all of the characters, the kind of magic that they can possess, but the story mainly takes place in Catterdam. I'm trying to find the little map here, which is a city on this island called Kerch, and Catterdam is heavily inspired by how Amsterdam is actually built. Mina, one of the six characters, she also loves strobwafels, which is a very typical Dutch snack, a Dutch cookie that you can eat with your coffee or with your tea. This story is filled with magic, with a ton of adventure, and I would highly, highly recommend it to anyone who loves fantasy. Hi guys, I am here with one of the booksellers from the American Book Center. Yes. Jealous, but we're gonna call him Giles. Yeah, to make it easier. <laughs> yeah, to make it easier. How long have you been working here in the store? Um, first, the first time 10 years, mm -hmm. then I moved to the south of France, and then I came back and they hired me again immediately, and uh, I think it's already 10 years again. That's amazing. Yeah, so 20 years. I'm also jealous of the south of France part because yeah, I yeah, love me France. Too. Yeah, me too. Oh, that was lovely. <laughs> what is your role kind of here in the bookstore? Uh, I am a buyer and a seller. Mm -hmm. I have something like six sections, and uh, I do the Instagram. So it's social media. So you're also an influencer, kind of. I am <laughs> an influencer, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Like you just said, you have special sections in the store that you kind of make like the selection for of the books yeah. that will be sold there. So it's yeah. actually also quite a personal shopping experience here. It's, it's like we have 20 buyers mm -hmm. and they all decide which books are in their sections. So it's not somebody from up there saying, you need to do this, or you need to do that. No we decide so that that's kind of the abc way yeah that just, sounds amazing. just do your thing yeah great yeah. and yeah. you have in april your 50th anniversary coming up yes it, it started in 1972 two gay guys from the u.s uh, uh shipped containers with porn and uh, sci-fi mm -hmm. to uh, uh the netherlands and then they hired a place where they just put it all there yeah and uh from there on it became a, a bookstore and we were chosen uh, at, uh one of the the most beautiful bookstores in the world. I can and, imagine. And there was like three or, three or four times that that happened. So we were in magazines. and uh, That's great. Yeah, so yeah. That, was, that was kind of funny. If you ever come to Amsterdam, you absolutely have to check out this bookstore. You're able oh, to find a, everything. A huge, here. a huge uh, uh, section now is romance oh. and young adult. Yeah, because of that's TikTok? <laughs> Book talk, TikTok, yeah. whatever. That is exploding. That is really like... The wonderful thing is, that I just told you yeah. that normally uh, you see young girls sitting on their phone, apping each other while they're sitting yeah. next to each other. But now they're actually looking at uh, book talk and they come here on a Saturday and it's like filled with girls. Yeah. And they all want the same kind the same, books same that kind are on, of books on, on, on TikTok. Yeah. You see like a trend in how the book selling yes. has been over the past years because of, well, I make booktube videos, so hopefully also because of the influence of booktube. Yeah. But yeah. I know that TikTok and book talk is very like, in right now and has a huge influence probably yes, uh, definitely now it's colleen hoover which is huge yeah she's very very i popular. mean girls come in with her with her shopping thing and it's like okay that one that one that, <laughs> one, that one that one they already know what they want to get yeah yeah but then they it, it's kind of a get together they're all standing in front of the section talking about the same this, yeah. book so it's amazing that the new generation found books again yeah through <laughs> funny enough their telephones yeah so, so uh, they can actually also be kind of useful the phones and the internet and like you it, know yeah yeah it's like a knife you can kill somebody with <laughs> it or you can s slice bread with it yeah they're now all slicing bread <laughs> well yeah. thank you so much for having me here in the store thank you so much for the interview yeah, thank you for coming by yes and, and right good luck with the project thank you so much You're welcome. and i will take you guys on the rest of the tour right now so i'm actually walking to a very famous bench here in amsterdam that a lot of literary fiction people will know of i think a couple of years ago it was actually removed by the government because it had to have some like how do you call that like construction recovery needed to be done so this bench is at leitsegracht and herengracht 
So let's see if it's still there. I am at the space that you might be able to recognize. It's so windy and I'm so scared that my camera is gonna fall over. So I'm keeping an eye on it, but I hope that you can recognize this place from the back. This is where they shot a part of the movie, The Fault in Our Stars, and where also the book takes place. So I'm pretty sure that you all are quite familiar with what this book is about because I feel like it is a YA contemporary classic, modern classic, and it follows the story of Hazel and August. Hazel is like a cancer survivor. She's actually still going through the whole medical deal, the whole treatment, and she meets this boy called August at this like cancer support group. And basically, not really a spoiler, kind of a spoiler, they fall in love, but they also love the same book, which is written by a Dutch author. So they visit Amsterdam just for their favorite book. And this is, I don't know if you guys can see, um, the bench that they sit on together and where they are so, so romantic. So I'm actually on my way right now to a place that was very, very important in Dutch history. And it has to do with World War II because also like many other countries in Europe, the Netherlands was definitely hit by the regiment of Nazi Germany. So you may already have a guess of where I'm actually going to right now. I've never actually been to the museum. I cannot go today, but otherwise I would really like to visit it sometime. I hope that you guys will be able to hear me because of the wind. I am right around the corner of the Anne Frank house. It was quite crowded over there and it felt kind of weird to just like put my camera there and talk about Anne Frank's history. So Anne Frank, when World War II was happening, she kept a diary her family's life here in the Netherlands because they fled here and they lived at the house that I just filmed at. Behind a closet, they had a secret space where they were staying and hiding from Nazi Germany. And you can read all of Anne Frank's thoughts and whatever she encountered in her diary. I think it is so vital and that you will learn so much from it and you can really experience how life was back in the day during World War II. And very unfortunate for Anne Frank and a lot of her family members, it didn't end well, which is quite an understatement. So it is a thoughtful, moving, yet also quite humorous diary entry book situation. And something else, something different that I want to recommend is actually a Dutch writer that has been translated into England, and that is Herman Koch. If you are Dutch, you have probably read some of his books. He's also very well known for this story called The Dinner. And this is a murder mystery, I think more of like a psychological thriller, actually. So we follow Miss Mr. M, who was a super famous writer, he wrote a very well-known novel a couple of years ago, but the time has passed and so has his fame. However, there is one reader who remains super devoted and whose attention to Mr. M is actually unwavering. He is a reader with a vested interest in Mr. M's most famous story, a teacher, a student, an affair, and also a brutal murder, but the body was never found. The sound became so bad here, so let me do a live reenactment of what I just said to you. But while Mr. M knows how to write about murder, his reader's experience is of an altogether more practical kind. There isn't necessarily like a specific place in Amsterdam that I would associate with this book. It's just that the author has lived here since he was two. place that I'm here in Amsterdam for my visit is the Rijksmuseum. I think this is the most well-known museum here in Amsterdam and it is in a special like place, a special quarter which is called the Museumplein where they have a ton of different museums from like the modern art. You have the Van Gogh Museum. Let me grab one of the last books that I have to recommend. It is kind of funny because it is actually a Christmas romance and I know that Christmas has just passed but during the winter times you can actually do like some really nice ice skating here. It just looks so fantastic, so I can absolutely imagine what a beautiful setting it must be for the romance novel. <laughs> these children behind me. But the book that I want to recommend to you guys for this beautiful place here is called Together by Christmas by Karen Swan. So our main character Lee has left her old life around five years ago and started living here in Amsterdam and came with her newborn baby and a couple of secrets. Right now her career as a celebrity photographer is going so well and her little baby boy is actually five years old right now. I guess you could say she is thriving in life. <laughs> However, on one morning Lee finds 
a book that was left behind in the basket of her bicycle and scrawl inside the book is actually a desperate measure and Lee's world turns 360, 180, how do you call that? Her world turns upside down and she feels compelled to help the mysterious person that wrote the message in the book and she's actually gonna find the author who wrote it called Sam. Sam and Lee have an instant undeniable connection and they both feel like they actually might have a shot together at a wonderful future. However, when Lee's past comes calling, everything seems to kind of just like fall behind and it all sounds just like a very emotional, beautiful, romantic book. And it's also like set here in Amsterdam during the winter times, like a magical winter wonderland. So it's such a shame that Christmas has just passed, but this one should definitely be added to your TBR for this year's Christmas, which it will come more quickly than you probably think it will. <laughs> so I'm back home and actually funny story, I really wanted to film live in Amsterdam for the recommendation of The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. And I was planning on visiting the Warmusstraat, which has a part of our origin story or like one of the main inspirations for this book. But when I arrived there, I noticed that it was part of the red light district and I didn't really want to film there. So I went to De Dam, which is I think one of the most touristy crowded places in Amsterdam that you can visit. It is this huge square and they have like a ton of entertainment. You have the Galverstraat there as well, which is I think the biggest shopping street. So let's first talk about the miniaturist. And the sequel is actually being published later this year by Penn Macmillan as well. This is a historical fiction just set after the golden age in Amsterdam. Burton was actually inspired by this woman called Petronella Ortman and that woman lived in the Warmustraat that I wanted to visit initially. Petronella owned a little dollhouse which was a replica of her home and back in the day those kinds of like dollhouses, miniature houses could be worth even more than a super huge historical house at one of the canals. So it is autumn 1686 and we follow Nella Ordman, you can see where the inspiration came from, who arrives at a grand house in Amsterdam because she is gonna marry this really wealthy merchant called Johannes Brands. And although Johannes is really quite distant from his new wife, he gives her a very extraordinary amazing wedding gift, namely a miniature house of the place that they live in. And the miniature is the person who creates all these little dolls, the china, the furniture for the dollhouse, and whose tiny creations ring eerily true. In this book, Nella discovers more of the secrets that the household holds, and she realizes the escalating dangers that they are about to face. And it seems like the miniaturist is actually holding their fate in her hands. This premise sounds absolutely fantastic. It is definitely a page turner. It is magical. It is haunting, and it is full of surprises. And like I said, the sequel is coming out this year, so definitely check out this one. That was my journey through Amsterdam. I hope that you had an amazing time with me. I had so much fun, and I'm looking back on this day filled with joy. Joy. Thank you so much again for watching and perhaps I will see you another time. Bye!